Spontaneous speaking video 34. Today I'm going to be talking to y'all about why Satan ain't afraid of your mama. This is going to be derived from a blog off of my blog site. Um, for those of you who don't know about it, d double -E number 2 blessedwordpresscom You can find this blog article and many other blog articles on there that I've uh, kind of written before I started doing more YouTube stuff and I might actually switch uh, might actually switch back to that um, pretty soon and work on both of these but in the meantime I'm gonna be rehashing on that specific blog article why Satan ain't afraid of your mama and the link is in the description for those of you who are interested um first off I'm gonna start with the story <clears throat> I went to PS198 um, in Bronx, New York. Uh, that was the public school, that uh, elementary school that I kind of went to. Um, my fir for first grade, I believe this was back in first or second grade. And I remember one day, it's faint memory, but I remember it. <laughs> I remember one day I'm just, you know, chilling in line talking to my friend Najea. I still have her on Facebook um, by the rough chance that she's watching this. Hey, what's up, girl? Um, and as we're talking, then this guy named Daryl walks by. And you know, Daryl, he's known as a bully. Um, he bullies a lot of, he bullied a lot of people back then in our grade and even a few people in, in higher grades. But he tend to have a fondness is the word that I used in the article for me for some reason uh, and he was walking by like this and boom like right into my stomach and I didn't have abs back then so it hurt really really badly <laughs> but um I remember completely just falling to the ground and gasping for air and he's laughing um got in trouble, he was sent to the principal's office, but he's been to the principal's office like mad time. So I, I don't even know what was going on with his parents. Like maybe he goes home and he just deletes the messages or his parents just can't control him. But all I remember is that he never really cared about how many times he would get in trouble. And that day, I, it was picture day. And the picture, you'll see it on my blog. Or maybe I'll post it like right about now. Yeah. Obviously, I looked pretty funny, but yeah, it was picture day, <laughs> and when I took the picture, obviously, I looked really, like, weird or whatever, and my mom found out about what Daryl was doing, because that wasn't the first time that he was bullying me, but that day, I remember that when my mom found out, she was blown, and Daryl lived across the street from where we used to live, 831 Home Street, apartment 3B, Bronx, New York, NYC. <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't live there anymore, so if you go over there, then you won't find me. But um, that's where we lived, and Daryl lived across the street from me, and my mom went to Daryl, because he used to play out in the park with all the other little kids, you know, in the, over there, and my mom literally approached him in front of all these the other kids, and she was basically like, Daryl, come over here. And she was like, pissed, guys. She was blown. He like, like mama bear type blown. And she was like, come over here. And Daryl, like he walks over. He was disrespectful, but he wasn't that disrespectful. So like he was like this or whatever. And he's like, yeah. And then she was like, look, if you touch my son, I, I swear, if you touch my son one more time, you're going to see what I'm going to do to you. My mom's African. So you don't want to mess with her. <laughs> and my mom really loves me. So you don't want to mess with her. But I, re I distinctly remember my mom calling Daryl out. And everybody in the park was like watching and was like, oh. And after my mom pressed Daryl that day, like she dared him. She was like, I dare you. Touch my son again. Touch my son again. Daryl never bothered me again. And that was a pretty great day. <laughs> but the reason why I tell this story is because as scary as my mother is, as scary as your mother may be, no disrespect, you know what I mean, um, demons are not afraid of your mom. Demons are not afraid 
of how many guns you have. Demons are not afraid of how brolic or how tall you are. Uh, demons are not afraid of how well of a speaker you are. None of that. Or how many degrees you got, how, how good of your grades, like, none of that. <laughs> demons are not afraid of you. And for those of you who don't know what demons are, demons are the fallen angels that followed um, Satan when he was kicked out of heaven for... Um, basically trying to create a mutiny against God. Huh, stupid move. But he did it. He tried it. Didn't work. He tried it. <laughs> Didn't work. And um, the, we're not going to go through the whole story of demons right now. Uh, that'll probably be for another video if you guys really want to know. But essentially, demons are very powerful. They're very, you know, like I, uh, I, I mentioned in my video um, on the top, my top 20 book list, I think it was top 20, I mentioned one book called He Came to Set the Captives Free, and that book talks, like, a lot about, um, uh, witches, and, like, you know, like, it's a true story of somebody who was in the occult, or, like, you know, satanic church, and how she would, like, physically see demons, and Satan himself, and everything, and the way that she described these demons, they were, like, really brawlic, you know, muscular, they came in all different shapes and sizes, some of them had wings, some of them did not, uh, some of them had horns, some of them did not, um, Satan does not really have a pitchfork, but yeah, demons are very strong. They are smart. They've been here longer than humans have been there. Uh, yeah, and they're just essentially very powerful creatures that should not be underestimated. Imagine Satan, who's the leader of all the demons. He's basically the most powerful one of them all. And I'm just here to tell you that he's not afraid. <laughs> Him and his demons are not afraid of you. They're not afraid of your mom. They're not afraid of your guns. They're not afraid of your guns. Like, none of that. They're not afraid. And that should be somewhat striking to you. Because if a demon's not afraid of you, then what's stopping them from attacking you? Uh, I have a few friends. This is, There's actually a couple of them that I know who have encountered... Uh, de demonic attacks like one would actually see demons like in her room like being rampant when she's you know asleep and she'd wake up in the middle of the night she'd feel demons like touching her or whatever like I had to call her uh, one time you know, she called me one time I had to pray for her like because this was happening like repeatedly she would wake up with scars and after I prayed very heavily for her then they went away coincidence I don't think so um, I have another friend who has dealt with some stupid campers <laughs> playing with the Ouija boards in um, her cabin room. And then that's a whole other story. But basically, she woke up to see a transparent figure in her room and walked around and everything. And this friend is not the type to exaggerate or lie or anything like that. Transparent figure picked up, shoes, did more walking, something like that. And I'm just really making this story concise and threw the shoes back down and walked out. This demon didn't really do anything. But that's just how it was, like, and she said that the campers, like, they were, when they were asking questions to the Ouija board, they were just, like, it was actually moving around. Like, the thing, they would be like, oh, what's my grandmother's name? And the thing would actually, like, move around. Like, it's not something to be played with. Demons are not to be played with. Um, but yes, the demons are very powerful. They're very strong, as I've said. And they're not afraid of you, as I've said. The only person, the only being that they're afraid of is God. The only being they're afraid of is Jesus Christ. And that is enough for me, at least, to be even more encouraged to draw closer to Jesus Christ. Um, so the analogy that I used in my blog article was essentially to imagine yourself as the new kid at school. You show up as the new kid, and when you're there, you know, you're faced with all of these bullies at school that they tend to, like, do whatever bullies do nowadays. You know, they throw you in the dumpster or, you know, beat you up or randomly punch you in the stomach before picture day and leave you with a very weird-looking picture to live with for the rest of your life. Um, stuff like that. And finally, one day, you get close to a friend who all of the bullies are afraid of. This friend is 
very polite, you know, very, has very calm demeanor, whatever it is, but this friend is not to be messed with. All of the bullies respect this friend, and as long as you are around this friend, then you are safe. You're good. As long as you and this friend are cool, then y'all are good. Now, what if this friend, just, you know, hypothetically speaking, um, gave you a list of things to protect you <laughs> from these demons, from these bullies, <laughs> and you chose not to listen to this list. You chose to disobey this list, or even to make things even more realistic. What if this friend just hypothetically, like, you knew, like, you did not want to, uh, hmm, what should I even use that would be, like, more realistic? Uh, what if this friend, just like in every other friendship, you know, you, there's just certain things that you know you should not do. Like, you should not steal from your friends. You should not, um, uh, mess with your friend's girlfriend or something like that. You know, like, what if you just, you just knew that you're not supposed to do certain things. Like, you, you broke one of these contracts with this friend. You'd eventually have this friend, like, draw away from you, right? And, or you would draw away from this friend. And basically, whenever you and this friend are not, like, as cool, the bullies are free to come back to you and just pound on you. Do whatever you do until you and your friend reconcile. Long story short, <laughs> metaphor short, Jesus, as I'm sure you pictured, is this friend. Um, demons only fear Jesus. They only fear Jesus' name. And until you are able to actually have a true and intimate relationship with Jesus, as in like, until you are able to actually follow his direction, and not just, it's not just about following rules. It's not about following rules. Like, it's not just about waking up and reading the Ten Commandments and then making sure that you follow them. But it's about building a intimate relationship with Jesus. And this means through prayer, through, um, through reading your Bible, through spending time with other uh, Jesus followers, you know, getting to know him more through um, reading your word and like hearing sermons and you know stuff like that. Um, as you spend time with Jesus, as you continue to grow closer and closer to him, you will naturally draw further away from sin and you will naturally remain closer to Jesus, close enough to where these demons will not even be able to come to you or hurt you. They'll try and attack you, but you now have this hedge of protection around you. and. I can talk about that really hedge of protection like for a lot, but that's for another video. But yes, what if you had this friend? You know, what if you actually did draw close enough to Jesus? Um, imagine how much more protected that you would be uh, from all of these demonic attacks that you could be experiencing. Um, what would have happened if Simba? We'll keep that one for another video, actually. <laughs> but yes, anyway, sorry to draw this out. You know, I just felt that this is this was on my heart today. And um, for a more in-depth understanding, in case you didn't understand what I was basically trying to say throughout this video, I'm basically, you should go check out my blog article. Like, I, it's really, it's something. But um, my whole point in this video is that Demons are real, and it sounds woo-woo, whatever, but they are real. They are out there to attack, and if they're not attacking you, it's either because you're already protected by Jesus due to your personal relationship that you have with him, or it could be the other extreme where they're not even worried about you because, well, you know, they're already on my team, so it's like, you know what I mean? Um, but I encourage all of you to build that relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, he loves you. He doesn't matter what you've done in your past. Um, he's always there to forgive you. And um, at the end of this video, I'm going to have a video um, probably like right up there uh, that it's, it's going to be called the gospel message. Um, and it just explains everything. But I just really encourage all of you to get to know Jesus Christ for yourself and um, grow 
and in that relationship with him, not because you fear going to hell or not because you fear, you know, demons, um, that could be part of it. Um, it was for me, <laughs> honestly speaking, but actually fall in love with him. Like understand like how much he loves you and what he's done for you. And once you allow yourself to just become that intimate with him and just draw closer to him, like I said, you'll draw further away from sin and those demons will not be able to bother you. Um, they won't be able to do anything to you that Jesus doesn't allow. And Jesus does not allow much. Because if anything, he's exponentially, exponentially more protective than my mother is. And Satan is not afraid of my mom. But he is afraid of the Jesus that lives in my mom, that lives in me, and will hopefully live in you. I sound like the end of a TV show. <laughs> Done.